we now know that our old material is very popular. Um, but then do we continue playing that for the rest of the, our lives? And those are some of the major decisions that we have to make, we older chaps. And f me personally, I don't think I want to rest with that. I don't, that, that's not going to excite me very much. David Bowie there in a 1990 interview with CBC's Laurie Brown. He was speaking about his greatest hits tour that saw him collaborate with Canadian choreographer Edward Locke and also dancer Louise Le Cavalier. That was just one of a half a dozen interviews that Laurie Brown conducted with the music legend. Laurie is a music journalist, the host of The Signal on CBC Radio 2, and I want you to dig deep for some of those memories. What a great opportunity to see this man you know in his outside of all of the uh, the lights I suppose what struck you about him uh, I remember when I was able to, to meet him and sit down I've never felt my position as being more privileged when I would think of the thousands of fans who wanted to be right where mm -hmm. I was to get a chance to meet him and talk with him and what I always got from him was that there was he had just as many questions for me as I had for him. He was insatiable. The, what he read, um, the art that he saw, the art that he consumed, whether it was visual art or all kinds of music, art history, politics, dance, fashion, his, his artistic view was absolutely complete. Um, and that he also, he also had a lot of respect for anyone else doing music. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't matter if, it, you know, there was some young band, some, you know, he, he always felt that everybody involved in the art world had a very, um, a very special place and it was a very interesting and essential voice that people had. So that's in, what I got from him. In that clip that we aired uh, with mm -hmm. you interviewing David Bowie then, uh, he talked about how, cha you know, not changing would not be exciting. I'm wondering, mm -hmm. you interviewed him six times. Mm -hmm. I mean, you went, were in that position of privilege, as you call it, six times. How did he change over those times that you interviewed him? Did you see that constant need to, to reinvent? Yes. I did, but it wasn't, it wasn't so much a reinvention, it was just he was continuing on the same exploratory path. It wasn't like he collapsed and then he said, okay, I gotta get mm -hmm. out there again, except for maybe one point in his career, and that was after he had his most mainstream success with Let's Dance, Modern Dance, and, uh, and he was really at the top of the charts in North America. And it was that point that he felt he had lost his way. And I think he was very nervous about just falling into the trap of having to be a number one artist from then on in. And so what did he do? He went off and did some work with Nine Inch Nails and Trent Reznor, albums that people hated. Right. A lot of people hated. <laughs> but for him, I think it was that creativity that just, it said, okay, here I go again. I'm on the edge. This is where I want to be looking in. I don't want to be on the inside looking out. We've got uh, other journalists giving us a sense of his music and, you know, his legacy. But from you, is there a personal memory that really stands out for you in the times that you've met David Bowie or you met David Bowie? He invited me to be backstage with him before he performed at the CNE once. And I went into his room and he was just sitting there watching TV. And we sat and talked for about 40 minutes. And he was showing me the books that he was reading. And it was a completely low-key conversation. Right. And it was lovely. And I thought, he's going to go out there in front of these thousands and thousands <laughs> of people. I thought he'd be you know, pumping himself up or stretching or something. It was nothing. It was like we were having a conversation over dinner. He, but it was, it was such a privilege just to be able to get yes. and sit and talk with him. But he was pulling at me the whole time, trying to get, so what do you think about this? What are you reading? Have you read this person? And it was fascinating to me that he was insatiable. And, and the curiosity about other people. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there was so much curiosity about David Bowie himself, not only his childhood, but what it is that caused him mm -hmm. to reinvent all the time when it came to music. Um, what is it that, that you think, Laurie, people collect around or, or collate? Why do they just love David Bowie so much? Because I think he had a brain and a heart that was big enough to include everybody in his audience. He was able to take any young kid who was feeling like an outsider 
and who was unsure of their own life, maybe their own sexuality, of mm -hmm. everything, and he would say, there's room for you. You're included in this too. And I think he, he included so many people. So he wasn't just a mainstream artist. I think he was an artist for everybody on the outside too. Thank you for sharing some of those stories. There must be some great memories you have of them. Thank you, Laurie. I do have some great memories. Thank you. Lori Brown is the host of The Signal on CBC Radio 2.